On the show today, we'll discuss ways to improve higher education outcomes in Africa. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Markets, and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther Ugodaga. Now, the importance of human capital development in Africa's growth trajectory cannot be understated. Now, many believe quality education at the tertiary level holds the key to unlock the potential of Africa's economic growth. Gary Fernandez, Vice President, Marketing and Student Recruitment at the Transnational Academic Group, joins me to explore ways to improve the outcomes of higher education in Africa. Of course, also looking at recent developments in the tertiary institutions here in Africa. Gary, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Pleasure to be here, Esther. Thank you so much for having us. It's always interesting to talk about Africa's higher institutions, and not just and how, uh, com how it compares to what's going on and higher institutions outside of the shores of Africa. But let's start with here, here on the continent. What are your thoughts on the development? Because uh, when we hear about, when we talk about conversations around Africa's tertiary institutions, what we usually focus on, what's most talked about is the gaps in infrastructure, the gaps in the curriculum, gaps in you know, the outcomes. So it's more, it would tend to be more negative than positive. But I'd like to hear your thoughts and your perspective. Uh, sure, Esther. Thank you. That's a great question. And in fact, um, you know, I'd like to start off by introducing uh, the group that I work for. It's Transnational TAG, which stands for okay. Transnational Academic Group. And what we're providing here is students the opportunity to study, um, you know, closer to re closer to home without having to leave the shores of Africa. You mentioned about, um, you know, um, uh, infrastructure and uh, certain issues that are prevalent here in, in, in Africa, um, you know, for students. Um, and we're here to address some of these issues. Uh, in fact, um, uh, you know, they, we, we partner with leading universities, and this is one of our four pillars, we partner with leading universities from around the world. So uh, some of the two universities that we are currently partner with is Lancaster and Curtin University. We also were the, you know, uh, uh, we had established uh, Murdoch University back in 2007, and they're completing 10 years. Um, so going back, um, you know, students, uh, obviously, um, if you look at the numbers, um, over 500,000 students leave Africa every year to study abroad. 45 to 70,000 students are from Nigeria alone, 11,000 from Ghana. And that tells you a lot, uh, you know, about students and their appetite for studying abroad. Perhaps there are, I'm sure there's some great universities here in the region, but it must be competitive to get into this university, that's number one. Um, and also when you look at the current job market and what industry is looking for, um, you know, sort of skill set. Now the four, fourth industrial revolution is upon us um, and we want to make sure that our students are well equipped to, you know, address those needs, whether it is in the digital economy side of things, whether it is in the uh, urban development or construction, civil and construction side of things, uh, be it engineering, uh, business, um, we, we offer programs that addresses some of these, these needs. So, um, you know, some of, the, some of the things I would like to say is that, you know, universities here, um, I mean, there's some great universities, and I think there's a lot that they can learn, uh, that we can learn, but also they can learn from uh, some, some, of the, some of the partners that we're working with, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the likes of uh, Curtin University mm -hmm. and uh, Lancaster. Um, a lot of key takeaways okay. for them. Now, I know that it's not just Africa. All across the globe, we yes. have students uh, leaving their countries, even in the Western Absolutely. global economies, leaving yes. their countries. Uh, students from the US go to the UK. Students from Denmark go to the UK and, you know, and vice versa. Or when you look at the number of students who leave Africa for uh, institutions outside of the continent, it's quite high compared yes. to others. So that also begs the question, why is that number so high? And um, you, told, you, you mentioned the word competitive. competitive uh, I'm thinking yeah. that also. There's, there's a problem around perhaps, uh, I mentioned infrastructure, but perhaps around the curriculum and how competitive they are in today's uh, modern world and how they, uh, how they address the needs of today's employer. Yes. What can we learn from, or what can institutions from Africa uh, learn from the current curriculum that we see today? I, I hear that some institutions also partner with industries, yes. uh, collaborate and partner yeah. with industries, you know, obviously to, for better outcomes yeah. for them. So I'm thinking, so how can Africa begin to tap into this opportunity? So, you know, a degree alone um, won't serve the purpose for anyone. Um, at the end of the day, you need to get experience uh, that you can bring back uh, into your economy, into, the, into your country, and, and be able to serve any organization. Um, so take, for example, Curtin University. Curtin University is ranked among the top 1% of universities worldwide. Our rankings are not good because of the, our university is not good because of the rankings. Our, um, the rankings are good because of what the university is doing. Uh, for example, we have blended learning 
way of um, you know t teaching and, and delivering courses, which is quite innovative today, where a student can basically participate in a classroom where uh, another campus, and we've got like five campuses, one in Dubai, Singapore, Malaysia, Mauritius, which is the newest one, and of course Perth, uh, Bentley in Perth, which is uh, the, the main campus. Our students across these across these various campuses can be in sync with the lecture that's going on in any campus. So for example, if you're teaching Islamic banking in Dubai, or for that matter, if you're teaching something on artificial intelligence in, in Perth, um, and if it's a topic of interest, students can, can, can you know, be a part of those conversations that are happening. But also, meaningful work, uh, you know, hands-on uh, practicum that, that's required uh, as well. So as I said, getting a degree alone was, is not going to cut it. Uh, for our engineering students, for example, have got about uh, 480 hours of work experience that they need to garner as part of the engineering programs. So we're not just producing engineers, we're producing engineers that have uh, that have the experience, have worked with industry, and are able to, uh, you know, provide, um, you know, uh, address address the needs and okay, concerns. So cutting edge um, in technology, innovation, innovation, that is a, a key in today's in putting together today's uh, uh, tertiary curriculum yes. in Western uh, for an institution like TAG. Do you think that that is a major selling point today? Absolutely. For students. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's a combination of many things. Uh, firstly, you know, to stand out working working with a you know world class research a research intensive university, uh, studying with a research where, um, and the other thing is the is the quality academics. I mean, we at Tag, I mean, our four pillars. We stand true to it. Uh, we mentioned I mentioned to you about partnering with you know research led universities, but also academics make a difference. These academics that we hire, um, you know, of course, are are qualified to teach in any campus. Uh, they have years of industry ex experience, but so not just you know PhDs. These are these are uh, professionals that have the experience, and then also you know fostering a, a culture of innovation for ourselves and our partners. I mean that's very important, right from recruitment of students to the way we deliver the core courses to what they learn. It's very truly very innovative. Here, listening to you talk and uh, looking at some other foreign uh, institutions, I often ask myself: Have they always? I mean, was it a? Did it take decades of transition and I mean development, obviously investments in infrastructure and research? I'm thinking that is, is what happened to you that made, you know, that's made many institutions in the Western world to be so developed and you know really up to date. So I'm thinking, uh, which, what would you say African countries need to begin to do on that front? Do we need to, is it, is it, would you say it's an issue of priority? Do we need to begin to reprioritize? education as it were. Absolutely. I mean, education without saying should be the backbone of every economy that, um, you know, at TAG, we believe in, you know, we believe that developing, we believe in developing the people who develop nations. Mm -hmm. um, and we stand true to that motto. Um, so um, it is important that, uh, you know, universities here uh, address that need. Uh, there are several ways of doing that, working with uh, research-led universities like the ones I mentioned about Curtin or Lancaster University uh, in the UK. Um, I'll give you an example of innovation. I mean, I'd like to talk a little bit about what you know, Curtin is doing, for example. Um, you know, we've uh, just recently um, you know, announced the autonomous bus on campus uh, with a French company called Avaya. Um, and so, um, you know, the, one of the things that this autonomous bus does, I mean, of course, it transports students and it, it has the capacity to take about 11 passengers. Uh, you know, it goes up to a speed of, say, 65 kilometers. Again, driverless works with the GPS system. Um, you know, here is, this is a university that is actually offering a program in mining and engineering and second in the world after University of Colorado. Uh, and we're also teaching sustainability and artificial intelligence on the same side uh, of things and, you know, how to, you know, uh, best utilize energy in the best, in the best possible manner. Uh, you know, so this car, this autonomous car, is a, autonomous bus is actually 100% uh, electrical. So these are some examples that, you know, we can bring back home here to Africa, um, you know, working with uh, partner universities. So what, what, what is the response now? I'm coming here uh, to a place like uh, Nigeria, for instance. Uh, what, what, what's the usual reception that you get? So, um, you know, uh, students that actually apply to our university um, that have applied over the past couple of days. Now, we've been visiting uh, schools. Uh, we've been meeting with principals. We've attended a fair called the African Scholarship Fair. Um, they, they, there's, there's obviously the demand for certain programs that we offer. Uh, so engineering. Such as, okay. Engineering. Uh, business so, and again in, within business specific uh, courses in finance and accounting again they're looking at you know uh, professional accreditations of those programs which we have 
Uh, for example, you know, our finance program is uh, recognized by CFA and prepares you for levels uh, one and two. Our AC, our um, accounting program, um, you know, students get units uh, exempted for the uh, for, by ACCA, which is a prestigious organization. Uh, and we've also gotten uh, recognition from ICAEW, which is another, uh, you know, renowned accrediting body for accounting. I'm saying this because, I mean, these specific courses, are, you know, there's a huge demand for business, there's a huge demand for engineering. Uh, we've, uh, we've also seen a demand for law. And now, um, why go all the way to the UK? Why go all the way to, you know, even Dubai if we offer law? I would say, yes, it, it's great. But you have a university, a world-class university here closer to home, and that's in Accra. We've got Lancaster. And the degree program is the same, whether in Curtin or Lancaster is the same as is offered at a, at a parent campus. In fact, it comes from Australia. Uh, and, and at the graduation ceremonies, you often it's, it's, a, it's a moment of pride for our parents and students and faculty members. I mean, we have the chancellery team flying in for those ceremonies. And if a student wants to even attend a ceremony at our campus, uh, it's one Lancaster, it's one Curtin at the end of the day. So they're getting the same experience. Uh, okay, has it has the opportunity, or I mean, I'm just I'm just wondering here. Uh, the opportunity to partner with, and I mean, it's good with what you're doing with Lancaster, you know, making it, bringing it local, bringing it back yeah. home, uh, but partnering with other institutions that are, you know, created here and based in Africa, in different African countries, yes. is that an option that's open to you? Um, absolutely. So our chairman, uh, um, Mr. Um, Zafar Siddiqui, and the vice chairman, Mr. Uh, Rakesh Wahi, are founders of TAG, uh, you know, Transnational Academic Group, they have plans to open up, you know, uh, 10 campuses in across sub-Saharan Africa. This is the future, this is the vision. We already have, um, you know, uh, two at the moment, one in Dubai and one in, um, you know, Accra. Um, so the, 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 there, there is a lot that we are planning to do, so working with institutions. We already are doing that in several ways. Uh, we have students coming in from outside as well to study, um, you know, um, in, in, at, at, um, at Lancaster. Um, in Dubai as well, uh, we're planning to launch a summer school where we have students from here coming there uh, to, 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 uh, to the university. Okay. But going back to your point of, you know, can we partner with universities here? Um, absolutely, there's a lot where we can learn. Uh, there's a lot where we can contribute. Uh, partnership could be through, you know, faculty exchanges, uh, provided the university see fit. Um, it could be knowledge transfer. Uh, could be joint research, um, you know, and even offer students to study in, in say in, in uh, Nigeria or in Ghana or anywhere in Africa for that matter, and then come, so you can do two years in, why not study two years in, 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 in your home country and then take two years in one of the other uh, cities where we have camp uh, campuses okay. at. Gary, we'll take a short break. Thank you for your time Thank so you, far. Esther. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. I've been speaking to you, Gary Fernandez, Vice President, Marketing and Student Recruitment at the Transnational Academic Group. Still with me in the studio is Gary Fernandez, Vice President, Marketing and student recruitment at the Transnational Academic Group. Gary, thank you for your time so far. Now, we've when we talk about education, uh, higher institutions especially, we also talk about jobs, the f the, especially the jobs of the future. Nowadays, we hear about artificial intelligence and how they could actually determine or take up some jobs, and then we, that could dramatically change the jobs of the future. Now, how, I mean, from depend regardless of the region, high institutions, and in the West and Africa, how do you think high, high institutions should begin to prepare students, graduates, for the jobs of the future, taking into consideration that there's going to be AI and, I don't know, God knows what else? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, first I'd like to say that while artificial intelligence is here to stay, and it's here to stay for a very long time, and in fact, we'll see a lot of developments, but there's, no, there's never going to be a substitute for human intelligence because there is a huge gap. Um, you know, we, we look at, when I gave you the example of the autonomous bus, um, you know, and uh, without taking, getting into, you know, brands or anything of sort, there have been instances where, uh, you know, the, there were vehicles, that auto, autonomous vehicles that have actually hit people as well. So, uh, you know, there are, of course, uh, certain lags uh, that we see. But the important thing to highlight is the sort of in education that we impart, preparing students for jobs of the future. Like, this is going to, this is already happening. Uh, we're looking at, you know, for example, in Dubai, uh, the Road and Transport Authority plans to have drones, hum you know, where, which, which can actually transport people. Uh, you know, drones today, of course, uh, transport medicines or, you know, even if you can order Amazon, stuff from Amazon, it gets delivered to you or pizza or what, what not, what have you. Uh, but you have drones transporting people. I mean, this is exactly what is happening today. Um, take my role, for example, in marketing. I mean, I've seen, spent like 15 years in marketing. Now, the, the way we did marketing in the past and today is completely, has been a huge shift. 
So when I had to reach out to students, uh, of course, the traditional means still remains the same of reaching out to people. Those are things that never change, you know, customer service, being able to reach out to principals, reach out to students. But how do you reach out to them? Is it through print ads? Well, you know, most of the students today, my daughter, for example, my two-year-old Rachel, um, watches uh, cartoons on our iPad or on my phone. Um, you have teenagers, I mean, they've got more than, you know, uh, I at least have, say, three accounts, three social media accounts, but I know of students and teenagers who've got like five or six accounts. My colleagues uh, in the office as well outperform me in that, in that sense, in that space, uh, be it Snapchat, Twitter, you know, uh, of course, everyone's got a LinkedIn account, but Facebook, being constantly engaged all of the times, having two phones. Um, so we, we either embrace the digital revolution or we ignore it to our peril. And I've said this before as well. Um, so, uh, you know, the, so for, for example, the courses that we teach now and how we prepare, there's a new program that we launched at Curtin University, which is in uh, web media and marketing. Okay. Um, and it's, it's a mass communication. So traditional marketing, you'd study about print advertising. We still treat, uh, we still offer that as a, as, a, as, a, as a program. We teach them new media forms. Um, so, uh, you know, content marketing for the web, social media, uh, trends in social media, digital uh, mm. advertising. And, and is this all because from where you're sitting uh, as for TAG, you're able to look into the future and say, look, these are the developments that are happening right now. There's talk about flying cars. There's talk about, I mean, driver, that's happened already anyways. Yes. Let's talk about AI. So are you able to, from where you're sitting, say and say, okay, we can, we've looked down the, into the future and we know exactly the kind of skills that are going to be required by employers and we need to equip the students now. So is that, did that cause a, a drastic change in a kind of, in your approach to the curriculum? And you is know, it constantly changing? This is, uh, you know, uh, we fostered, and I said one of the four pillars, which is uh, we fostered an, a culture that is innova of innovation for ourselves and our, our people, our, our colleagues and our staff. Um, and that is since the inception of, the com of, of TAG. Uh, the um, our founders whole um, you know dear to I mean uh, and they've even when we as we started with Murdoch University the, um, the, the the facilities back then in media so we've got a studio similar to here in CNBC and must say you've got a fantastic studio we've Thank you. we have uh, a similar studio back at our, our home campus in, in, in Dubai um, and so the reason for that of course was to offer students cutting-edge uh, experience uh, where they can get hands-on learning but that, is, that has changed over time. So since inception, we've always thought about the future and we're already thinking about uh, you know, setting up TAG, Transnational Academic Group Colleges, which could end up being feeder institutions for uh, some of the universities. And again, uh, you, you asked about you know, partnerships earlier on. I think, uh, you know, again, in offering the programs, we need to assess what uh, is in demand through our local partners, through the universities that we may partner with, seeing trends, uh, and then being able to say, okay, this is the program I think would be best fit. Mm -hmm. So for example, you also offer engineering, uh, and our engineering program is accredited by uh, Engineers Australia. Okay, engineering, the, the accreditation is very important, but what about the work experience that the students are going to garner as part of the program? I mean, how contemporary it is. Um, so we've looked into all of that. We looked into the curriculum. Curriculum is important. What's also very important is the people delivering those programs and the years I was going to ask about that. I mean, is that constant reskilling, as it were? Very important. Because uh, you, you talk about talk about new technology that comes out, you know, it's con constantly evolving. And I'm yeah. thinking, so th this particular lecturer, does he have to now go back to reskill? As in, how does he also stay yeah. up to date? So, uh, you know, at, uh, at Curtin, for example, uh, when we hire, uh, we hire people who have active research skills. They're active researchers and publishers. You can't just be a doctor. Um, so we constantly update our skills. We constantly look for opportunities uh, for our staff members. They attend conferences. Uh, they visit the campus, home campus. And, and this is where the home campus plays an important role in knowledge delivery. Uh, and you know the, the university. So for example, Curtin University has got over 50, 50 years of uh, research ex uh, experience, um, and also Lancaster, which is a you know renowned university in the UK. Um, these are institutions that have done a lot. Um, and so we look up to these institutions okay. for knowledge transfer um, and our faculty are an important aspect of these four pillars. I mean, uh, when we hire, we look at people with not just qualifications, but also the experience that they come in. Are, have they worked in industry? Because at the end of the day, you know, if you're an undergraduate student, you're not going to get work experience on day one. You need the, the experience that you're going to get is from uh, these faculty members. 
Um, okay. Well, what about diversity? Because I know you, I mean you're going around the globe and you, you're getting students from all parts of the of, yes. of the globe. But what is diversity, or how does diversity come, and how does it change things? I mean, I, I know you're creating this global community yes. within a campus area. Yes. How does that enrich? You know. Esther, yeah, so that's very very important indeed. I mean, so you get knowledge from just about every culture. Like in Dubai alone, we've got students from more than ninety different countries. Uh, Dubai being a, you know, a cosmopolitan city, yes, we do have local residents, but we have students flying in uh, to Dubai as well. Uh, you know, you learn new languages, this culture. Tomorrow, uh, so let's say we are both studying business at uh, Curtin University, uh, we could end up being business partners. Um, so, you know, um, by just uh, by mere relationship, uh, you know, being a student, and if we've been in a group project together, an assignment, uh, there are some really ex exciting stuff that is happening in our curriculum. For example, there's a um, there's a there's a project capstone project in every in each and every course that we offer, uh, that ensures that students collaborate with one another. They're part of groups. Uh, they get to learn uh, about brands, they get to work on brands, I mean, real cases, and they're working together. So if you look at Pepsi, how is Pepsi sold, as an example, or Coke, how is Pepsi or Coke sold in each of these countries? I mean, each student can bring in those sort of examples into, uh, their, um, into their studies. So I, I think culture plays an important role. And as with our faculty members as well, we're very diverse. We've got uh, an international mix of faculty members that also come from a, a, a variety of countries. But let me say this, all our faculty, and this is very important, as well. Our faculty members um, meet the requirements and they're qualified to teach at just about any campus. So tomorrow, if we get a call from Curtin Perth to actually be able to deliver a program there uh, for their students, our faculty members are qualified to go actually and fly in on that. Now, in the last couple of years, we've seen a change in the uh, direction in terms of the number of students. For instance, uh, I used earlier, I used the, the uh, UK as an example where uh, especially for Nigerian students, uh, I mean, you usually flock to the UK, but we've seen that drop as, due to the changes uh, in immigration in those countries, especially in Europe. How is that impacting on the shift where students are going now, and how are you taking advantage of that new market? Sure. So, uh, see, um, I, can, I can speak for Dubai, for example, uh, where we are at, uh, we have Curtin University. There's been an, a, a huge shift in the visa policies, and I can say this with a smile and say that you know our ruler has done a fantastic job in actually um, you know introducing a five-year visa for university students and also five ten-year visa, ten-year visa for exceptionally good students. This is something that you know we studied. I studied in Dubai, um, and I can say that we've never had this opportunity. But now that you have this, for parents. Uh, it's a um, you know, sigh of relief for students as well. If they're looking to stay, get, get some exposure and experience and bring those, or even cut, cut, continue to settle there, uh, they can use Dubai as a launch pad for that and they can stay there or even open up their businesses as well. Uh, furthermore, I mean, uh, we've also relaxed the uh, work uh, study uh, policies as well. So students can now work and study. And there's about 4,500 companies under the free zone where we operate and uh, where students have access to opportunities and, you know, be it internships. Of course, Academics always comes first, and, I, and you know, as a parent, and you know, I, I would say that uh, my my child goes into university, will make sure that you know the academics always comes first. But at the same time, as long as it's done with respond, you know, if it's respond, if, uh, if there's okay. some guidance provided, and the university and the universities here play an important role in guiding. So we have career counselors, we've got a teaching and learning center that groom students. Uh, you know, why not? They can take that opportunity while they study. Okay, last question. How yep. significant is the Nigerian market for tag strategy? It is important indeed. I mean, uh, we, uh, I mean, as with any, uh, West, you know, sub-Saharan African country, um, we, we've just learned from this trip, we've had over, you know, good response uh, over the last couple of days. I mean, to quantify it, I've had 44 applications already that I've taken. You know, we've got to work with our teams on ground. So Nigeria is an important market. There's a huge demand. There's already Nigerians. Uh, there's a huge uh, community of Nigerians in um, you know some of the parts of the world where we are, where we operate in, um, and I think uh, you know Nigerians will contribute to the economy um, you know of Dubai. But at the same time, they'll take back a lot of learning um, and bring it back home as well. Okay, yeah. Gary, thank you so much for talking to us today. Absolute pleasure having you on the show. Pleasure. Thank you so much, Esther. That thank was you. Gary Fernandez, Vice President, Marketing and Student Recruitment at the Transnational Academic Group.